Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're getting back to the roots of why we made GR War Games series to simulate what if one nation attacked another nation? What would it look like with a healthy balance of realism and fun? Today the role play is Sweden is trying to join NATO but currently being blocked by a member state. So Russia is going to take that opportunity and make a strike to try and take the strategic island in the center of the Baltic Sea, Gotland. Before we run the mission, it's important that we go through the unit setup. I know it can be a bit boring, but otherwise none of it is going to make sense. Before we do that, I actually want to start with a question for you, the viewers. Sweden is a very big land mass country, and I always assumed it had a big population of at least 100 million people. It turns out I'm wrong. I realise it's only just peaked 10 million. That's a very small country. So why in that case, viewers, is Sweden so well known geopolitically and non-geopolitically? Everyone in the world knows something about Sweden. And why is such a small country so overrepresented in the aviation scene? For the last 80 years, possibly more, Sweden has been at the forefront of aviation development and still is in 2023. How can that possibly be a thing? So I'll park that and let you guys answer that. On to today's scenario. First, we've got to understand the geography. We don't have a Baltic map yet, so I've had to draw my own. I've taken a 610 by 420 mile snapshot of this area. These wiggly lines are the edges of various countries. It's accurate to about 10 miles, which will be near enough for today. This landmass here is the southeast boot of Sweden. This is Gotland Island here, part of Sweden. This is the southern boot of Finland. This area is Russia, St. Petersburg, a major city there. Here is Estonia. Here is Latvia. I'm not sure what these islands are, so please let me know. This is Lithuania. This is Poland. Next, the Swedish bases. Very important, and I've set them up in the right places. We have Uppsala here. Obviously, pronunciations will be bad. 170 miles from Gotland. We have this one here, 205 miles, and Ronby here, 140 miles. Next, unit overview. Swedish defence. 55 Gripens plus humans, 5 Visby Corvettes, 4 RBS 15KA launchers, 8 RBS, sorry, spelling mistake, 98 Shorad, 3 LVKV 9040B self-propelled air-to-air gun, and 1 Saab 340 AWACS. The Russian attack, a full air wing, 24 MiG-29KRs, 1 Kuznetsov carrier, 6 Gorzhkov frigates, 5 Rapusha landing ships, two Tu-22 M3M bombers with Kinjal missiles, four Tu-160M1 with caliber missiles, and one A-50 AWACS. Unit details. First, the Gripens. I found it impossible to find out exactly how many Gripens were based at the various bases. I do know they operate a total of 100 Gripens. So I'm going to make a fairly liberal bet that I can use 55 in this area of Sweden. 10 on Gotland here, 15 here, 15 here, and 15 here. The spread will be 35 of them air to air and 20 of them anti ship. Plus, I'll have my human driven aircraft too. The Gotland aircraft will actually be starting on Guam Island, as you can see here, and I've had to use it as our makeshift part of Gotland. The AI today will all be max skill level, and the Gripen's air to air variants will be armed with four meteors, two close range missiles and a fuel tank. Our humans also will operate from the Gotland Air Base. Operating from this base here will be 15 air-to-air. -air. Operating from this base here will be 15 anti-ship. They will be armed with two RBS-15 Mark IV anti-ship missiles and will of course be attacking the aggressing ships. And 15 air-to-air Gripens from the north. Naval units. Sweden has five Visby class modern corvettes. We have all five modeled today. Here, 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 and here. They have anti-ship and anti-air ability. Next, shore defense. Sweden has a total, I believe, of 10 RBS 15KA units. Again, I can't find out how many are stationed on Gotland, so I'm going to be fairly liberal and say four units here. Each unit carries 
four RBS-15 anti-ship missiles with rearm capability. Next, air defense. Again, we just cannot find out what is stationed on Gotland, so we've made an assumption at eight RBS-98 Shorad units in two batteries, defending the all-important base for the fighters. Battery one, battery two. Each battery has a giraffe radar and four RBS-98 units, each of which carry four Iris-T SLS Shorad missiles. There is no HIMAD, no long-range air defense here. The only long-range air defense that Sweden runs is two Patriot sites, and they are both inland, and I've modeled them here. And the here, again, finding the actual locations I just found impossible. A uh, very close-range defense is going to be in the form of 9040s, and I don't know how many that they would have, so I've put three units at the all-important airbase that is guided high-caliber Auto cannon, which just leaves the AWACS, which I've modelled in the southern boot of Sweden. And that is today's Swedish defence. Next, the Russian attack. First, why don't we look at the bombers? We have two Tu-22 M3Ms, each equipped with four KH-47 M2 Kinjals. These are hypersonic missiles with a max speed of about Mark 10. They are actually anti-ship missiles. I know they are used in the current Ukrainian conflict as air-to-ground missiles, but they are technically anti-ship guided weapons. They will be taking on any Swedish naval vessels that are spotted. Followed up by Tu-160 White Swans, four of each is carrying 12x65 stand in today for the caliber cruise missile and it will work very similar to the caliber those missiles will be launched at the airbase and will be trying to take out obviously this is not an accurate airbase but it's our analog for today any runway joints here 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 and here if the Russians can take out all joints, then the runway is disabled, which is part of their role play today to allow the Rapushas to enter, which are here and are carrying tanks and infantry and supplies for the invasion. Next is the carrier strike group, Kuznetsov at the center here. Aboard her are her maximum 24 MiG-29KRs with the most modern weapons. This is very controversial. No one really knows if these missiles are in service yet, but I thought they would need all the help they can in air-to-air. -air. So four R-77Ms and R-74 Archers. They will just do air-to-air -air and try to clear the airspace as best they can against the Gripens. And finally today are the Gorzkovs. We have six of them. One defence here and four offence in a picket line about eight miles out. They are equipped with caliber cruise missiles, which will do the same as the calibers from the Tu-160 White Swans to try and cut the runway. They also have P-800 Onyx supersonic anti-ship missiles, which they will fire at targets of opportunity. And I think I've covered everything, guys. Based on the overview that I've given, it's going to be hard to know exactly who won this battle. We will make observations as we go. But can you give me a rough idea with what you've seen? Are the cruise missiles going to take out the base at Gotland, or are the Swedish defences going to manage that threat? I think uh, Sweden should hope that NATO membership comes quickly. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why they're doing it now, because they're not NATO yet. The Gripen's a very advanced 4.5 gen fighter. It packs a lot of punch for its size, and it stays with Sweden's doctrine of being able to basically launch it out of a, a barn. I think... Technologically, the Gripen is superior to the MiG-29s. Roger, that's really interesting. Maybe we'll do a dogfighty type thing at some point. I'm going to disagree because I am actually a fan of the MiG-29. It's just always been on my one of my favorite aircraft. It's a more kinematically powerful than the Gripen, but I agree the Gripen's actually a really, really good plane and has benefits of its own with a much smaller radar cross-section. We've got these relatively well modeled, so it'll be really interesting to see who comes off on top here. Interesting point. The Gripen's with their meteors, hopefully if they get up and out and mm. can their data links working perfectly, those MiGs, I think, will have a tricky time getting in range for their 77Ms. As for going for the bombers, it's always with these bombers now, they've got such long-range capability. Mm. You've got to hope your, um, your shore rads and your defenses can uh, help you out there too. But if the Gripens can get up and fast enough and spot the bombers, they might get their bombs off, but got, Russia's going to lose um, some bombers, I think, in the process. Welcome in, viewers. On the Russian side, we have Simba Dark 
and Bird. On the Swedish side, we have Push, Strider, and Cannibal Simba. Please unpause. Right, this is going to be a very fast-paced battle, viewers. I've deliberately set the Russians up so it's a big, quick surprise attack. Why don't we focus on the fleet first? Okay, well, already cruise missiles going out. In fact, yep, caliber missiles going out from the Gorge Gods. Subsonic cruise missiles going for the base. Okay, we've got what next? T-800 Onyx. Supersonic anti-ship missiles. Off they go. And the Swedish are defending as well. The Corvettes have fired RBS-15s. Also, the RBS-15s will be launching their uh, units as well shortly. Most of the information will be garnered from the scoreboard at the top right viewers. So, a Russian has fired 14 anti-ship missiles, 24 cruise missiles. Sweden has fired 15 anti-ship missiles. Let's have a little look at those missiles. We've got the supersonic P-800 Onyx. We've got the subsonic uh, caliber cruise missiles. We've got the RBS Mark IV Swedish anti-ship missiles. Let's have a quick look at the uh, aircraft. Oh, wow, the uh, Gripen's are already up from Gortlands, the um, human pilots. The AI are just reaching the runway now. QRA all ready to go. The Gripen designed QRA aircraft A be able to operate from rough terrain and B be able to be started up very quickly and simply and taken off. Uh, these bases here are not quite as quick QRA today. It'll be three minutes before they even start taking off. The MiG 29s are taking off. Oh, the humans are really pushing forward. Simba and Co. Operating from the Kuznetsov. We've got the bombers, supersonic bombers coming in, the TU-22s. It won't be long before they get to their waypoint and they fire uh, the white swans coming in with their um, caliber cruise missiles. Let's see if we can see some uh, Kinjals. Being... Oh, wow, look at that. Kinjal hypersonic missiles, Mark 10 capable missile as modeled today. We've got air to air missiles. Oh, it's all going to be a quick one, I'm afraid, viewers. We'll do our best to see what we can. We've got these missiles being fired by our Russians today with a range of about 100 miles, equaled pretty much by meteor missiles. Oh, here we go. Meteor missiles being fired by the Swedish. A completely different uh, type of missile. This, a solid rocket propellant. This, an air-breathing ramjet type engine. Uh, everyone's fired. Let's just take a breath. Uh, now, look how fast the hypersonic missiles are going compared to anything else on the battlefield, even the mighty P-800. That said, it looks like the P-800s are going to get to their target first. 26 million uh, used from Sweden. 212 million used from Russia so far. The Russian aircraft going defensive into notches. Here we go, the first P-800s are getting in range of the Corvette. How can they answer that? Probably not very well. It, it is just a Corvette. It uses the CAM air defense missile. It's actually a, a kind of British missile. Something's happening. It's firing it. Oh, it's shooting it with his gun. Look at that. But it just can't get enough of them. Look at that. Absolutely outclassed. First Visby destroyed. Great ships. Visby is a great ship, uh, especially for its size and for the amount of cost, but there is only so it can't do miracles. Okay, here we go. We've got some cams coming up uh, based on, oh, interesting color, based on the, um, the Azram, actually, air to air missile. Can it take out the King Charles? Visby down, hit by hypersonic missile. Right, okay, next. Uh, it looks like the cams are going to have no effect against the hypersonics today. In real life, these will actually come down to a lot of steeper viewers, but we are limited to how we can model them. No, the cams cannot intercept. Th 
three Visbees down. No aircraft down thus far. All right, lots of R-77s that have been evaded. Meteors. Oh, God. So the PA-100s are done. They're done. They used the hypersonics are done. Where are the X oh, X uh, 65s are out uh, from the White Swans? A whole bunch of them simulating today's mass caliber strike viewers. No aircraft shot down far so far. It's all been long range exchanges and um, everyone's seen fit to do what they need to dodge. Oh, lots of missiles being fired in terms of money. 0.6 billion used so far by Sweden. 0.246 billion used by Russia. Lots of vapor trails in the sky for various reasons. Rocket motors and... Flash. Uh, uh, yep, our first Gripen of the day. Well done, Bird. Good shot. Long range, 100 mile shot. These uh, meteors made it all the way over the uh, strike group. You can see, look, something's happening there. I don't know what. I think that's actually aeroplanes. Yep, that's MiGs getting airborne into cons. So much I want to look at, viewers, but it's hard to know what to look at. Let's have a look. Ah, right, okay. The three bases are now sending out their Gripens, which are now in action. I've managed to miss it, but they will pump out um, one aircraft every 30 seconds, firing their meteors. Also, we have the anti-shippers here with their uh, RBS-15s and these guys down here, air defense fighters. Two Reapers shot down. Well, Russians doing pretty well so far. I suspect oh, doing... there goes the MiG-29. One MiG-29 down, three Reapers down. I'm trying to see the kills for you viewers. I just missed him by a gnats. Wee wee. Three MiGs down. Three MiGs down. Wow, that's gone quick, guys. Three MiGs down, three Reapers down, four Reapers down. The exchange. They fire these huge batteries of missiles at 100 miles for viewers, and it takes minutes for them to get to target. But when they do, they're freaking deadly. As we can see here. Creeping not quite as good kinematically as the MiG. It doesn't seem to make much difference at the moment, though. Wow, actually, that says six Creepings down. Huge attrition at the moment. Three MiG-29s down. Let's go and have a look at these uh, uh, Meteors. The Meteors and the R-77s are self-guiding missiles that will guide on the data links. Uh, I've got to think about anti-shipping at some point as well. Uh, I knew this was going to be a hard one to watch, viewers. Right, that seems to have settled down. Uh, it was equal. Five MiGs went down. Six Greepens went down. Seven Greepens went down. Where is it happening? Where is the killing happening? It must be over here. There must be some shooting over here. Pumping out more R-77s. The Russians are split. The tactical situation goes to the Blues, which can pincer, obviously, today. The Russians are fighting out of a box, but they're actually doing better somehow, for whatever reason. In terms of air-to-air -air missiles fired, 34 fired by Russia, 32, almost equal, 33 fired by Sweden. Right, we're in a position now where anti-shipping is going to be a thing. Uh, so we've got the RBSs, which are going to be about 20 miles out from the Gorshkovs, which will be returning fire at some point. They have S-350 missiles, two types of, a 9.6 variant and a 100 variant, depending on range. Uh, 15 nautical miles. Oh, and they're getting all hot and heavy now with the air-to-air. -air. Still seven Gripens down to five MiG-29s down. And this R-77 is just locked onto that target there. Uh, in real life, Gripens have towed decoys, which we cannot model. And I don't know if the MiG-29s have towed decoys. Eight Gripens down. Nine Gripens down. And here we go. These are the S-350 missiles. These are the 9.6 variant of the S-350 SAM. Taking down the RB-15s. Oh, and doing a damn fine job as well. They do carry a lot of them. And they do actually have pretty good radars on those ships. So I'm not so surprised. 11 Gripens down. 9 MiG-29s down. So the air war is still pretty even. And I would rate these fighters more or less even overall. I don't think any of these anti-ship missiles are going to get through, viewers. No. First battery of RBS 15s taken down. 11 Gripens down, 10 MiG 29s down. It's pretty much even. Right, I've got to go and have a look at the uh, cruise missiles, haven't I? Another Gripen down. Flew right into that one. Had no excuse. Stubbornness, that was. Swedish stubbornness. 
Okay, the um, RBS uh, 15s are firing again. You're going to ask me why don't they fire all at once? Well, they don't. Their doctrine is not to fire at once. They fire in salvos, uh, and that is what they're doing. They're firing in salvos. Right, cruise missiles are now 40 miles out from the Gotland Air Base. So the X-65s, 120 miles out. Still huge exchange, masses. Oh, here comes some meteors. I haven't seen any meteor kills yet. Really good European weapons viewing uh, We use them on our Eurofighters in the UK. They operate very differently to the R-77. Good kill. Oh, wow, they were coming back now. The Sweden Pinter is finally working. Uh, 13 MiG-29s down to 12 Gripens down. Gonna have a look here. Are you shooting the missiles, Poosh? Yeah. He is shooting the missiles, Poosh, saviour of Gotland. Well done. It's fully legal and it is absolutely possible in real life, viewers. These are not self. Look, he's just smashing his way through these missiles. Well done, Poosh. He could take them with his Asrams, he could take them with his Meteors, he could take them with his RSTs, he could also kill them with his guns, and it looks like he's going to. Oh, so much to follow. Loads of um, MiGs have gone down recently. 13 to 12 with three ships down and no naval units destroyed on the Russians. I've got to have a sip of tea, viewers. Mm. You are going to struggle to keep up this one today. Good evasion from the Gripen. As the battle goes on, the missiles will get less and less effective as aircraft are... Um, Force down. Dark. Oh, kinematically notches that meteor. Well done. That's a great that's a great job there. But look, the thing about the meteors, it never really stops and it just keeps coming. Cruise missiles now are 24 miles out and Poosh is still working his way through them and he's doing a damn fine job every missile he fires. He's fired six missiles. That's at least six He's fired, but it's just, just too many. And this is the thing with a Russian attack, as it would be in real life. It's just fire too many. Eventually, some will get through. More RBS 15s out. The air war is slowing down a little bit. Dark still dodging meteors. You've got no right to dodge so many meteors. Oh, and he's taken out. Why do you get little glitches like that? It's because latency in the server. The server's struggling to keep up a bit. But trust me, it is all modelled at the core of the server. He even got a friggin' modernised archer off. Fair shot. MiG-29s don't actually carry this variant of it, but it's near enough, viewers, for what we want today. Oh, taken down. A late strike from Dark. Simba's back in the fray, evading meteors, spamming out missiles. 14 MiG-29s down to 15 Grievance down. Simba charging into combat. He wants Ravenge. And he will initiate Ravenge. Now Cannonball's shooting down the cruise missiles. Would Gripens shoot down cruise missiles in real life? Absolutely. 100%. And they've really weakened those cruise missiles. And what that's going to allow is the RBS-98 to be more effective against them. So well done, boys. It's a good use of Gripens. Simbra has got to do his damnedest to dodge these meteors. But it's a really good missile. And there's, there's not a lot he can do when you've got a meteor that fast. And lucky Simba. But uh, you're about to get some kills. I sacrificed myself. Smash! Prevent the wedge. Yes, you did. 18 versus 18. It's completely even. How about that, viewers? I just realised my microphone's completely slipped out of place. Sorry if I was shouting too much there. Another grieving down. What an air war. Things are really hotting up. And the boys have completely smashed the uh, calibre. And this shows what happens when you put humans in the mix. In single player, this did not happen. These missiles got through, viewers. You see the RBS is launching. Let me try and see it. It's these guys here, the firing RST SLS missiles. Good missiles, but they only have a range of about 10 ish miles. VLS launched, omnidirectional, obviously. And the first wave of cruise missiles has been afforded, defeated, all by hard work from Poosh and Cannonball. Well done, boys. They saved so far. 20 Griefens down, 18 MiG 29s down. I'm trying to find a place for my microphone where it's friggin' fall out of place. Well done, I RST. Oh man, things are going on, but they've still got the ex uh, the other caliber battery coming, which is a big battery. All the other Gripens are coming from Ronby. Uh, the anti-ship missiles are now being fired from the anti-shippers viewers. They absolutely want to take that carrier down. They must take that carrier down and thwart the attack and attack the Rapuches. 21 Gripen shot down to 18. MiG-29 shot down. Air-to-air -air battle still going on and... What's going on here? S350s are taking on these RBS-15s. A lot of acronyms today, viewers. R-77 still punching out. Uh, the MiG's doing really well to out kick out of their box today. 
One, one difference that we didn't maybe pick up in the briefing is that MiG-29 is at burst fighter viewers. It means it's all energy and no legs. So it's designed to just smash quickly, which is doing here. It's probably why it's beating the Gripen. The Gripen is not a burst fighter. The Gripen is, is it's not really a long range fighter, but it's an, more of an endurance fighter. It can go for longer, but it doesn't have that burst that the MiG-29 has. So the burst fighter is probably uh, finding this battle slightly better, which is why you're probably seeing more Gripen shot down. Uh, than MiG-29s, even though the Gripens have the uh, uh, thing. Now, a tactical situation, uh, uh, in real life, the burst fighter is usually not as useful, but in this case, for a surprise strike, great evasion there by AI MiG-29. It'll be really interesting to see if any Russian ships get sunk today. They are 100% vulnerable, they don't carry, they have great S-350 missiles over attrition. They could be defeated. Dark is wiggling his way in and dodging his meteors today. He's done a lot of things he's got no right to do today, but he's doing it. And he's got himself a friggin' modernized archer off, a close range IR missile. Oh, but it lost track. It got neutralized by flares or whatever. Right. X-65s are 70 miles out. I suppose the boys will go and start chewing into those. Uh, what's going on there? Smash! Griepen down. 23 Griepens down, 19 MiG-29 down. The Swedish are going to be upset so far, but they've not lost Gertland. So all is well so far. Uh, Dark's found himself in the merge. I'm not sure if he knows he has, but he certainly has. That's going to be our first dogfighter for today, or at least the first dogfight I've seen. Burst fighter versus endurance fighter. The Griepen's got too close to the ships and is now being fired up by S-350. I would not want to be that Griepen there. They have a range of about 80 miles, about the same as a Patriot, and no Russians have been stupid enough to get in a Patriot site. Loads of RBS 15s now being fired from the uh, air wing from the place that I can't pronounce. 23 Griepens down to 21 MiG 29s down. Cannonball firing meteors at the X 65s. Uh, these, I mean, I'm not sure what these lot are doing. These are landing. They've run out of fuel. They've run out of fuel. Everything today is model. Here's the thing with why I model the bases at the right distances. Because fuel is the most important thing in a fight. Can you even get to the fight? They've gone their hard 200 miles. They've probably done it inefficiently because they're AI. And they've run themselves out of fuel. They would have to land, refuel and rearm. Which is uh, refuel, which is not going to happen in the time of the battle today. And we've got a merge here between a Gripen and a MiG-29. Azram's being fired from Strider here. I think they actually use Iris T's in real life, but Azram is actually a very good analog, so it's good enough today. Dark still found himself in the mud. Why is he not getting shot? Probably because these guys are out of weapons, and they are. Apart from their close range weapons, a Dark's found in that guy. Why is that guy flying around bad? But well, because he's on. Oh, he's out of fuel. They were endurance fighters, viewers, but they are 100% running out of fuel. Why? Well, Dark's a human. He's respawned, so that's why he's got fuel. These guys have been in it since three minutes in. It's now 21 minutes in, and they're out of fuel. That's realism, I'm afraid, viewers. If you fight like that, you can only fight for a few minutes. Uh, we've got an uh, uh, archer shot here. And Strider does not have an MWS, or if he has, he's not listened to it. And pan goes Strider. Things starting to slow down now as the attrition is taking toll pretty much. No, there's still some air wing of MiGs taking off. Let's have a look. No, they've got themselves jammed. They've driven into each other and got themselves jammed. It's annoying that that's life with working with AI viewers. Uh, but don't worry, because if you look at the numbers here, they, it looks like, they luckily, they were the last flight uh, to take off. So it's only three or four that actually got bugged there. So we can live with that. Oh, I've got to have a sip of tea. We're getting through it, viewers. Uh, we've got to merge here. Why is it so weird? He's out of fuel. Fuel is modelled realistically today. That Gripen has just been active since three minutes, whereas this guy only took off five minutes ago because he's one of the last that took off. Calibers, next battery of calibers are being churned, taken away by Cannonball & Co. They are 35 miles away from the Gutland uh, base. Uh, we've got some Gripens are firing here. Here's AI Gripens that are still firing. He's still got some fuel. Wow, he's high, 54,000 feet. Chucking real long range meteors all the way at sim about 90 miles. Oh, this guy's about to get in trouble. Didn't see that one coming, bird. And where is he? Uh oh, don't tell me it's a server crash. Don't you dare. No, bird, what happened? Bird's gone. Bird disconnected. These things will happen. Oh, well, most Gripens are now down. That guy literally ran out of fuel while dodging missiles and has crashed. This merge is going on and they are both fighting. No, he's out of fuel. Huh, he really, really is out of fuel. And he's really ambitious about landing in the sea. Fully ran himself out of fuel, look. This big 29 just hasn't been flying as long. 
22, MiG 29 is down to 24. Griezmann's down. Pretty much all of the air to air fighters are just down now. And the ones that run out of fuel are landing. Yep, they are literally landing. Look. Would they do that in real life? Well, yeah, right? I mean, they have to. It always begs the question, should I have given them extra fuel tanks and taken off meteors? Oh, yeah, in an ideal world, but there's only so much I can kind of plan for. Right, Push and Strider smashing down the um, X-56 calibers, and they're doing a damn fine job at it. Uh, Simba smashing his way through. Oh, but he does not see this coming. Oh, Simba, but he got his missiles off, and they will guard on Datalink, so they will have some legacy. All these guys are being why they were the anti-shippers. Oh, where are the anti-ship missiles? Obviously, they're not going to go into combat now. They're going to head back. Uh, right, so missiles, caliber missiles are now a total of uh, 17 nautical miles out. The boys are still churning their way through them, but there's a lot of them. Does Russia have more? Absolutely, they do have more, and I could have sent more out, but how many do you friggin' want? Lots of RBS is coming now. Now the question is, is how many defense missiles do these Gorshkovs now have, viewers? I don't think of no, they're VLS, so I've got... Oh, yes, I do know. Look, I can see right there. They've left the hatches open for the rainwater to go in. They've got about whatever that is. 40%. They've got about 40% left. Big last minute thing going on. 23 MiGs down, 25 Greepens down, viewers. This guy finally won his dogfight against the guy that wasn't even fight back. But look, a long range meteor found its way in. Look at that. Don't even know where that came from. But it 100% killed him. Nice bit of Rwenge. Right, it's all about this at the moment. The calibers are now 10 miles away. That's how, look at the ammo status for the RBS 98s. Oh, they've got some. They've got some viewers. What about Battery 2? Battery 2, yep. Battery 2 still have missiles. How many missiles have the boys killed? A lot. I feel like they've killed about 40% of what was there. I fired a lot of missiles. 12 times 4, which is 48 I've had 48 missiles, and there is not 48 missiles there, viewers. So they've probably killed about 40% of them. Well done, Greepens. Sip of tea. Okay, here come the RST missiles. Still haven't seen one shoot. There we go. Is this missile here, viewers? Thrust vectored uh, German missile with a range of whatever. Boom, and more KHs are going to be taken out, but are they going to be enough? Whoa! The overly ambitious Gotland airfield. Played by Anderson and on today. And the first runway cut is going to be made. Why is it important to cut the runways, viewers? Well, in real life, um, the pilots obviously wouldn't fight to the death like I've made them. They would fire the missiles on RTB and land. But well, they can't land if the runway has been cut, viewers. And lots... Yeah, the runway is going to be cut. Oh, the guys did so well, but... I want smack more than my life. Guys did really well, but the runway is getting cut. Lots of missiles hitting now. Cut, 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 cut. cut. Don't worry about the tiny crater it makes. That's just DCS being DCS. I'm pretty sure the runway's out. We'll go and have a look at it later, viewers. What we've got to concentrate now is that... <gasps> they're not defending themselves. The... Oh, no, I did not see this coming. The Gorshkov has run out of missiles. I think. Question mark. Okay, we can see a bit more runway cutting, viewers. I wonder, uh, thing, I wonder if these are working. Yes, they are. They are 100% firing. These are uh, probably out of ammo by now. Yeah, you can see those little hits in the sky. That's these weapons. They're guided auto cannons. They're just not doing well enough at destroying the missiles. Well, we've got a few seconds. Why don't we go and see what's being cut? Cut there. Obviously, the real base at, uh, wouldn't have a huge runways like this in Goodland. Oh, there's one cut that wasn't made. Cut. 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 There's a lot there that happened that I couldn't show you viewers because it wasn't quick enough, but a lot of defense was happening. Yep, this guy's having to defend from the RBSs. Are these RBS 15s going to break down the Russian carrier group and take them down? If they do, then the Rapushas are free to be attacked. And Simba is out for blood. Pretty much everything is landed or stopped now these guys uh they're not actually going to rtb because there is no base it's the middle of the sea they actually just turn around now and go to this base here but it's near enough for today yep so this is one more attack and what's bird doing what are you up to bird you are shooting the obvious 15s down aren't you a sexy boy um <laughs> bird you did a bird thing did you get any 
It's legal I tender. One, two. It's legal tender. If the Greepens did it, you can do it. You can respawn. It's all in the rules and it will equal itself out on either side. Like I always try and tell the viewers. Stuff's They're just taken. flying so low that you can't get a gunshot yeah, on them. Yeah, that is a, it was a real problem. The 100s coming out. That probably means they're getting short of ammo, viewers. Let me have a look. Yeah, they are getting short. Oh, no. Wow, look. They're quad-packed. I did not know that. The 9.6s are quad-packed, viewers. Oh, they've got... They've got friggin' infinite ammo. Wow, well, that's actually really good to the Russians. I didn't know they were quad-packed, viewers, so that's going to make a huge difference. I do rate their chances now. Look at that. Viewers, well, we've got a couple of seconds to talk. Let's talk about things that... I mean, it was good. It was a good fight overall, and I'm really happy with the way it worked out. There was a few bugs. Four, uh, these didn't take off. It happens. AI can be hard to work with sometimes. Um, all the ships worked perfectly. The bombers worked perfectly. Uh, there were some inaccuracies in the Greepens. Like I said, in real life, they would fire the missiles and turn away. I can't do that. Why? Because these bases that they came from don't actually exist. It's a freaking oil rig because this is the middle of the sea. But there's just limits. Uh, it is what it is. So I've had to chuck them in, and, and they died uh, accordingly. I mean, you can say the same about the MiG-29s. They would uh, fire the missiles and then go back to their carrier, but they would be more susceptible, uh, I would think. And as we can see, the runways have been destroyed. They would be repaired in 24 hours, but 24 hours, those repushers are going to be on the side there. Uh, Dark and Simba are having some fun with the anti-shippers. Sometimes ships refuse to fire their last loads. Yeah, I take that right back. And smash! RBS down. RBS down. Oh my god. Can you hear that in the background, viewers? F-35. Just, I've just started station F-35s out of my house. It went over about 500 feet. I just caught it out of my window. What are they up to? What's going on? That felt like a scramble. Oh, interesting. Anyway. Okay, we've got a little bit of PvP action here. Push and cannonball in close range with Dark. Let's see what Dark's weapon supply. Ha! Huh. Well, the weapons are probably the least of your problems, Stark. Talk us through it. I see a base I'm going to land at. Yeah, we well, you know we're talking about that being a burst fighter, viewers. That's it. It bursts and that's it. It's out of fuel. And, you know, everything here can carry more tanks, viewers. But you're going to carry more tanks, you're going to lose weapons. Stark, you know that you're planning to get to that base? You're going to be the first person in history to beat a meteor <laughs> without any fuel. Oh, Sim the Russians decided that I was a target rather than the missile. <laughs> Sim is a bit more smart. He's got out while well, he's got some fuel. And here's the thing, viewers, why you don't need... Everyone gets saying, oh, why doesn't a of Battlecruiser come back? And it is coming back, but it's completely pointless. This is just as effective as a Battlecruiser now, a small frigate. And that's why frigates are the future. Frigates, frigates are the future of America, Russia, everywhere. Because you just quad pack everything now anyway, because the missiles are just getting so small. You don't need those huge missiles because tech has advanced so much. You don't need the huge heavy radars, much smaller Pisa or whatever uh, radars. Frigates are, are the way forward. Or probably even Corvettes. Yeah, missile ran out of legs. Oh, you had a missile. Yeah, that's the beauty Yay, of the... Yay, uh, splash. Well done, Simba. Although you're about to get bundled by the beautiful boys. Yes, it did run out of legs. Look at that. Yeah, if that was a meteor, that would have kept going. Uh, why don't we have a look at the scoreboard to debrief viewers? Red losses, 29 MiGs, 112 air-to-air -air missiles, 14 close range missiles, 22 anti-ship missiles, 200 SAMs and climbing, 48 air-to-ground missiles, 24 cruise missiles at a cost of $1.24 billion. Swedish losses, 28 Gripens, three ships. The only ships lost today were the Visbees, just, just outclassed by hypersonics. They couldn't do anything about it. That said, it's quite probable, actually, that those hypersonic missiles in real life couldn't track a Corvette, especially a fast-moving Corvette. That's very possible. 96 uh, Meteors fired, 11 uh, Azrams fired, 66 uh, RBS-15s fired. Nine Sams fired, whatever the hell they were. No, that can't have been right. There's more than nine. Let me just go and check. Cost $3.7 billion uh, lost to Sweden. Now, who won the battle? Uh, Russia won, because they've just taken out the uh, airfield at Gotland. Does that mean anything? Ah, well, that... What would the follow-up be, viewers? What would the, assuming that no one helped Sweden out, would they be able to counter-strike? Yes, they would. All of the anti-shippers survived. They would go and rearm, and they would come and make another strike uh, within a few hours. Uh, and these guys would have nothing much that they could really answer with. So, to be honest, although the Russians won the battle here today, there's not much they could have done to take Gotland. I don't think, personally, because those creepers will be back 
so quickly with more missiles. Let me know what you think about that. As for the runway being destroyed, well, this is one thing about Sweden that I think we always forget. They build their aircraft to operate on highways and stuff, so they'll have backup fields or, or highways yeah. that they'll close off that. and just have these aircraft still stationed nearby. Um, so still a very dangerous threat. All right, viewers, uh, you've seen the battle. I've done the best I can with it. Extrapolate what you want from it and let me know what you think the follow-up would have been and whether Russia has any chance of taking Gortland. This is the only way in, obviously. They've got to come through the strait and they've got to come through here. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and bye-bye.